Welcome to First Canada's FTC Sim Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC Sim, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. Uh, today, we're going to take a video that we did before and we're going to change it to demonstrate another concept. So I'm going to reset this. If you don't know, we're in ftcsim.org and I'm going to actually log out so you can see where I am so up at the top here we're going to go to ftcsim.org uh, in this hamburger menu we're going to log in if you don't have an account you can create one as an individual it's free you can sign up as a teacher and there's a whole video about how to do that and insert your students or team members uh, so they can access first f sorry ftcsim.org uh, without having to put in any of their own personal identifiable information. So I'm going to log in. It's going to take me to this landing page again. The difference is this time there are no locks down here indicating that these were not available. Because this is going to be a tutorial based on uh, sensors, I'm going to choose a simple one here so that you can see it uh, that you've perhaps seen before if you've looked at them. So I'm going to go to the first one to demonstrate this. Close that video off. <clears throat> and once again, we're here on the screen. I have some old programs in there that I want to keep. So I've disabled them and I'm going to use this one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see on, here on the right hand side, we have the game screen with the robot, this lightning bolt, which uh, if you check some of the information coming up from First Canada, you'll see what that's for and how you can use it. The basic concept is we're going to turn the motors on, on this robot and get it to drive to this touchpad and raise a flag. Uh, and that's what this program does. So if I click on it and you can see that, that's exactly what it does. But today in the coding area, I'm going to put something else in because I want to use a distance sensor to show really simply how to use a distance center in your blocks coding. And all of that coding stuff, all the blocks are coming from over here on the far left side. So. Just to quickly recap this, so here's my basic framework, but in the basic framework now I have, I've turned the motor direction for the left motor to reverse, so it'll spin in the same direction as a right motor. Um, I do that in an initialization block area. Then I'm gonna set the power to 30% of its maximum power flow with the left and right motor, so they'll go straight. And I'm going to wait here on this command for two seconds, for 2000 milliseconds, before I go to the next one, which causes the motors to get zero power and that will shut them off. It'll cause the motors to stop. So this little sleep command here uh, is used so it doesn't go to the next command, which means that whatever the command is before that will keep working until two milliseconds, 2000 milliseconds or two seconds is up. So I'm going to actually go in here where it says sensors and I'm going to get distance sensor. Now there's only two. Uh, blocks, but when you look on your real robot, you'll see there are actually some more. So <clears throat> one of the things that you may not know is that there's a distance sensor on the front of this robot and it's shooting straight out and it's shooting out towards this wall. The thing about it is, the question is, where do I check for that? Well, I would check for that from the time the robot starts, from the time I hit run, until uh, it stops. So it's got to keep checking and keep checking and keep checking. There's not one particular time. So I need to use a loop. So we took this out a while back because we didn't need it, but I'm going to put it in right here. And it simply says that do something for a certain amount of time. And what I'm going to use today is the one that looks like uh, it was in there to begin with, which is this, this simulator. So I want to keep checking. I need the the robot to make some decisions. In order for it to make decisions, if you haven't already watched the video on this, you need to use some logic. The logic we're going to use is what I used to call in class all the time is the decision structure. It's an if statement. And what I need to, to do is I need to check this distance, the distance that keep bouncing back from this wall to the sensor on the robot. And I know I want to get to about a hundred centimeters away. So about a meter away. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure that works. So I need some more logic and I need to put in a comparison. This is my comparison, so I'll drop it in here. And the comparison is not equal, so I want it to be 
if it's less than 100. So if this, oh, let me grab it and drop it in. If the value coming back from the sensor is less than 100 centimeters, because it's using centimeters to measure, then I'm going to want to stop the robot, essentially, because I think I'm on the touchpad. So <clears throat> I need some math. I, I need to use the math block to get that value because I'm going to put in a number here. And the number I'm going to put in is 100. So that's going to be the centimeters because it's measuring in centimeters. And what do I want it to do? Well, I want it to stop. Well, here's a block that will allow me to stop. So I'm going to put in this. So as long as the value is greater than 100 centimeters, it's going to not do this. That's how a decision structure works. And there's a couple of ways you could do that, but this is the way I've chosen to do it. However, this will now make this, we hope, totally unnecessary. So I'm going to disable this in case, you know, it is necessary. I don't think it will be, but we'll just disable it. So what's going to happen now? The motor is going to be set to direction reverse, so it'll go forward. I'm going to set the power of motor left and motor right to 30% of their maximum power, so 0 0.3. <clears throat> and then I'm going to start this loop. And as soon as the robot starts moving, it's going to check the distance. It's going to compare the distance, so it's going to get this value. That's what this will do. It'll return a value from the sensor. It's going to check the distance in centimeters. And if it's less than 100, it's going to do this. If it's 200, if it's 300, if it's 101, it's going to say, well, this is false. It's not less than 100. And it's going to skip over this, and it's going to go back to the loop. And the robot's going to keep moving. So let's let's see if it works. Let's test it out. There we go. So it's working, it's working, it's working. Perfect. So it has determined that where the sensor is in the front of the robot right now, when it bounces back from this wall, it's a it's less than a hundred centimeters away. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we don't need this one. So I can delete that block. So once again, this was a simple example. I just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. <clears throat> and the simple example was to use show how you use a distance sensor. So with an FTC robot, you might be using it uh, in your program to bounce off something in your autonomous mode so that you're going to stop the robot at a certain point. Okay, or maybe for some other reason you want that distance. But this is how to use a distance sensor on an FTC robot. Hopefully, that has been useful for you, and hopefully, uh, you're enjoying the series, and you'll continue to watch the series. If you do have any feedback or questions, please feel free to contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org, and hopefully, uh, you can send me some information about how you're using ftcsim.org.